Ladies, so are you feeling rejected, neglected, abandoned by your husband? Are you feeling like you are in a situation where you are feeling unloved and not just being unloved, but like the person that you are living with doesn't like you? Like every single time you open your mouth, they are just frustrated and irritated and waiting for you to stop talking like you are bothering them whenever you come around them and you are interrupting their computer time, their phone time, their fantasy football time, their television viewing time. Are you feeling like you are a burden and a nuisance to a man? I'm telling you, the Lord does not want you to live like that. I know some of you women are overworked. You are cooked. You are cooking, cleaning, taking care of the household. You are depressed. You are anxious. You are sad. Why? Because you feel so unloved. You feel so uncared for. Who's taking care of you? You're running around taking care of everybody, making sure everybody's needs are met, making sure the person that doesn't eat meat has a vegan vegetarian option, you know, that there's no onions in your husband's meal because he doesn't like it, making sure he has something to eat, you know, when he comes home, making sure that he's good, that the kids are good, that the house is good. Meanwhile, you are looking like hell on wheels. Why? Because you feel like hell on wheels. You're wearing your depression. You're wearing your pain. You're going to bed so tired at night, so exhausted with your day. You are sleeping alone because goodness, your your husband is off doing whatever, you know, playing uh, video games, hanging out. I, you're wondering why he has so much joy with his friends, but doesn't have joy with you. Why can't he love you? Why doesn't he like you? Why can't he spend time with you? Why can't he take you out on dates? Why can't he bring you flowers? Why can't he make a meal for you? Why can't he show you the love that you show him? You bend over backwards for him and he rejects you and he neglects you and he is not supporting you. You feel like you're the only one responsible for managing the home. You're the only one responsible for managing the family. Yeah, you're starved of emotional attention. So you act irrational, even bipolar. Why? Because somebody that is starving will act in ways that are unreasonable, unnatural, because they are on the brink of death. And you, my poor girl, you have died a million times over just suffering and sacrificing for your family, for your household. I want to tell you, I know what that feels like. I know Jesus does not want you to feel like that. He hears your prayers. He sees your tears. He hears your cries. He just wants you to come to him. What is the answer? Go to Jesus and not in a fake try Jesus, but in a for real. He's the only one that can help you in that situation. For me, he provided a way of escape. He told me, Jennifer, go. There's nothing there for you. You have to leave. My kids are 19 and 21. They're in school. They have jobs. They're good. He's a good dad. He said, but Jennifer, there's nothing, nothing there. I've tried his heart. I've tested him. Leave now. Will that be the answer for you? I don't know. But what I do know is the Lord has a plan for you. The Lord has a solution for you. Even just getting lost with the Lord will allow you a way of escape to provide some distance between you and the husband mentally and emotionally, right? It'll allow you to be able to get that feeling you need, that understanding you need, that um, strategy you need to be able to make it day by day by day with the Lord loud in your ears, showing you your thought process, showing you how you're taking a part in uh, the dysfunction of your marriage, showing you, hey, not only the dysfunctional parts of your husband and making you aware of it, letting you know what spiritual uh 
attacks and what spiritual oppression and what's not and how that's being acted out, but also just some of the fears your husband has and some of the worries and concerns that he has. Hey, are you letting him talk to you? No, you keep cutting him off. So now he's not talking anymore. Have you gave him room in your relationship? No. Have you made him feel small in your relationship? He's going to show you and reveal you, reveal to you all of these things. And sometimes it's not you. Sometimes he's like, it's him. It's him. He's got some stuff going on with him that he needs to be able to work through and deal with. And God will give you the strategy for what you need to do, whether it's to stay, to work through it, to be sanctified through it, to be the model for your husband. And as you're healing and you're transforming and you're changing, your spouse will also um, be inspired to do the same. Um, Or it could be, it's, I need you to release that individual. Some of y'all are like, but what about the kids? Oh my gosh, they need to have a father in their life. Do you know the Lord could be saying that I need you to separate yourself from him? Because if you stay, what's going to happen is those kids are going to be traumatized by both of your guys' behaviors and conduct towards each other that are going to not just impact them in a negative way, but generations to follow. The Lord can know something's going to happen. And I'm trying to save you from that. That could damage those kids. (laughs) Or maybe there's a way to rescue those kids. Hey, separate yourself, distance yourself, make that separation, that part now. Maybe in the future, there's something else. Who knows? But you got to trust that if the kids are holding you back, that They are the Lord's kids before they're your kids and the Lord's got them. So if he's telling you, you need to part from this man, you need to trust that if the God (laughs) that has the resurrecting power to bring Jesus back from the dead, to resurrect Jesus from the dead, who can tell Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones, (laughs) if he's telling you, There ain't no hope for this, baby. You better go. What you have a faith in? So what is the answer? The Lord does not want you to live hurt, rejected, abandoned with somebody who's making you feel like a burden, like a nuisance, feeling like you are unloved and unliked. He doesn't want you to live looking like death and feeling like death. He doesn't want you dying a little bit more each and every day. Dying, dying, right? Your needs, your wants, your drive, having to kill the part of you that needs love, that wants love, that wants affection. He doesn't want that for you. He wants to give you joy, happiness, abundant life. It's the devil that wants to kill, steal, and destroy and devour. If that describes your life, then honey, turn that life over to God and let God make that life all the way over. Let him heal you. Let him deal with you. Let him love you. Let him be your husband. Let him pour into you. Let all of those soul wounds get healed by the Lord and then let him move you into the next phase of your life, into where he wants you to go. And that's a place of being whole and being restored. Look at my joy I have right now. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I am free. I am like smiling from the inside out. I no longer look like death on wheels. (laughs) A good girl. Why? Because I follow Jesus. I did what he told me to do. And I'm excited for new love. I'm excited for a new life. I'm excited to just continue building on this happiness and joy that God has been showing me he has for me. He has great life for you to go, go, whether it be with your current husband or whether it be moving on from him, seek God, let him show you, let him heal you. Mm. Love you, sis. Go get your joy. Bye.